And the readings will now be given by Mishaela from Canada. The Bible. Psalms. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, endeavoring to keep the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Genesis And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. Ephesians And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, and were by nature the children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, hath quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Act. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. On the morrow, Peter went up up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. 
and the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down on his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Colossians Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, Humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health was key to the scriptures and prose works by Mary Baker Eddy. With one Father, even God, the whole family of man would be brethren, and with one mind, and that God or good, the brotherhood of man, would consist of love and truth, and have unity of principle and spiritual power which constitute divine science. The supposed existence of more than one mind was the basic error of idolatry. This error assumed the loss of spiritual power, the loss of the spiritual presence of life as infinite truth without an unlikeness, and the loss of love as ever-present and universal. Mine and thine are obsolete terms in absolute Christian science wherein and whereby the universal brotherhood of man is stated and demands to be demonstrated. Unity of spirit gives new opinions to joy, or else joy's drooping wings trail in dust. Genesis 4, 8 Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. The erroneous belief that life, substance and intelligence can be material ruptures the life 
and brotherhood of man at the very outset. Cain very naturally concluded that if life was in the body and man gave it, man had the right to take it away. This incident shows that the belief of life in matter was a murderer from the beginning. Cain is the type of mortal and material man conceived in sin and shapen in iniquity. He is not the type of truth and love. Jealous of his brother's gift, Cain seeks Abel's life. Instead of making his own gift a higher tribute, to the Most High. Man's enslavement to the most relentless masters, passion, selfishness, envy, hatred, and revenge is conquered only by a mighty struggle. Every hour of delay makes the struggle more severe. If man is not victorious over the passions, they crush out happiness, health, and manhood. Here, Christian science is the sovereign panacea, giving strength to the weakness of mortal mind, strength from the immortal and omnipotent mind, and lifting humanity above itself into purer desires, even into spiritual power and goodwill to man. Let the slave of wrong desires learn the lessons of Christian science, and he will get the better of that desire and ascend a decree in the scale of health, happiness, and existence. The truth I have promulgated has separated the tares from the wheat, uniting in one body those who love truth. Again, I repeat, person is not in the question of Christian science. Principle instead of person is next to our heart, on our lips, and in our life. Our watchwords are truth and love. And if we abide in these, they will abound in us. And we shall be one in heart, one in motive, purpose, pursuit. Abiding in love, not one of you can be separated from me, and the sweet sense of journeying on together, doing unto others as ye would they should do unto you, conquers all opposition, surmounts all obstacles, and secures success. If you falter or fail to fulfill this golden rule, thou you should build to the heavens, you would build on sand. We come to strengthen and perpetuate our organizations and institutions and to find strength in union strength to build up through God's right hand that pure and undefiled religion whose science demonstrates God and the perfectibility of man. This purpose is immense and it must begin with the individual growth, a consummation 
devoutly to be wished. God gives the lesser idea of himself for a link to the greater, and in return the higher always protects the lower. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father, and blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. Love giveth to the least spiritual idea might, immortality and goodness, which shine through all as the blossom shines through the bud. We today in this classroom are enough to convert the world if we are of one mind. One infinite God, good, unifies man and nation, constitutes the brotherhood of man, ends wars, fulfills the scripture, love thy neighbor as thyself, annihilates pagan and Christian idolatry, whatever is wrong in social, civil, criminal, political, and religious codes, equalizes the sexes, and mules the curse on man, and leaves nothing that can sin, suffer, be punished, or destroyed.